Hey, all my burners out there, stoners and potheads, this is Weed Man 420 with the Weed Man 420 Chronicles. How everyone's doing out there tonight? We got our rose, we got our berry white, and we got our candles burning for you today. Mrs. Weed Man, how you doing? I'm doing well. We are going to smoke some homegrown cannabis that we grew. Mr. and Mrs. Wee Man grew in this house. We are excited to smoke it. It is called Berry White. Mrs. Wee Man is going to start us off smoking it while I read you what uh, what this strain is all about. Berry White is a hybrid strain that is an offspring of parents of near celebrity status in the cannabis world, Blueberry and White Widow. Two lovely strains. White Widow is one of the all-time faves for me. Uh, Berry is famous in its own right for its even balanced effect. You offer relaxations from stress and anxiety along with a sense of euphoria. This strain is perfect for inspiring an upbeat mood and may lead to conversation and creative pursuit. This plant's flowers have a light sour berry and pine smell and a fresh taste similar to their scent. They generally have a strong blue coloring contrasted by orange hairs. I grew this and Mrs. Weedman grew this and the terpenes in this it's yummy. It's very yummy. Uh, this is really strange because this, remember a lot of the cannabis we've been smoking has uh, micrine in it. This is the first strain that doesn't have micrine in it for being a hybrid indica dominant. This has limaline, which is citrusy, citrus scented mm -hmm. terpene, commonly believed to provide anxiety and stress relief. Pinene, which is a piney flavor, which is scented mm -hmm. terpene that is also found in rosemary <laughs> and many other herbs. <coughs> and caraphyllene, which is peppery, spicy, peppery terpene. They may have anti-inflammatory benefits, which I love. The THC, I didn't have this tested, so I really don't know what the THC contest is. But the, the average in this strain is between uh, 17 and 21%, which is awesome. Um, I got to say... I grew some fine cannabis, don't you think, Mrs. Weedman? I think it's quite nice. We've yes. been smoking. It's still curing. Still got another couple of weeks, but we've smoked a little bit here and there just to test it out because we're kind of excited about it. So, um, But this gives you a relaxed feeling, happy, euphoric, uplifted, and creative. I have to agree with all of that. Um, the strain is very, very relaxing to me. I love it. What do you think, Mrs. Weedman, while I smoke? I think it's great. It has a really nice flavor, and I think all of what you described it, um, as being is is accurate. We'll see how I feel. Well, we've smoked it out of we a joy. It, yeah, we smoked it out of uh, our Steve Roller. I've smoked it out of the Rick and Morty Bond, and all three ways are great. And like I said, we are we are excited about growing our own cannabis in, in, in our house and being able to take part in what's legal in, 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 in Illinois. And since we are learning how to grow and now we're going to talk to you all about how to store your cannabis and how long your cannabis is good for, because we have people asking us questions on that. So Mrs. Weeman and I are going to do this one together. I'm super excited. We've been researching, reading a lot of articles on this and years and years and years I've been told how to store your weed but i remember back when i was younger when you would buy it from your back end alley guy and it would come in just a baggie just not even a ziploc bag just a little sandwich bag rolled up nice and tight and you know it was you could just see a lot of shake and it was just not really kept well and i didn't know any better in high school and in my early 20s how to store my weed i just left it in the baggie sometimes it would sit for you know a couple weeks and actually you know it was drier than it would crumble in your hand it was terrible as I got older and I, and I started hanging out with a bunch of burners and stoners and potheads, they had taught me to put it in mason jars um, and keep it kind of sealed in dark places, don't leave it around a lot of light and stuff like that. But we read some articles. We're gonna go, I'm going to go into a couple things here just on how long, how good your, your long your weed will last. And some people say six months. Some people say a year. Some people say a year and a half if it's dried and cured. Uh, if it's kept in a cool, dark place, uh, um, some now labels have expiration dates on it where it will tell you how long. It's usually the day it's it's packaged to the day it's, you know, that it gives it a full year. So um, it's up to you. And most people, it doesn't even last a year. If you have like an eighth, most people could smoke an eighth in a week or in a couple of days. It just depends. So most people don't have to worry about it. Somebody like myself, you know, has an ounce. I like to keep it nice and in a cool, dark place. Keep it on my mason jars. Um, ideal temperatures, uh, because of mildew and mold, uh, you want to 
kind of thrives in between like 77 to 86 degrees. So you want to just keep it in that lower temperature range. Um, also, don't forget, as weed gets a little bit older, uh, you start losing the THCA, and, and, and that, which turns into THC. Eventually, it'll degrade into what we call CBM, which is another cannabinoid with a different effects and properties. Uh, we've talked about CBN before. It doesn't show up in a drug test. It, it, it's more of a body little bit relaxing kind of like cbd but um you know just what will happen if you don't store your weed correctly um mrs wee man we got some do's and don'ts Mm -hmm. on how to store your weed give us give us the do's and don'ts all right first and foremost though you need to know like the uh the factors that you want to control and that would be light heat humidity and airflow so you want an airtight container uh, and you don't want to store it in some place that creates a, mo- a moist, moist, I said moist, <laughs> a moist atmosphere. <laughs> and you don't want it in the heat, especially not in uh, natural sunlight that is uh, found to be the most damaging to the THC level in marijuana. So um, some do's and don'ts. Um, store it out of direct sunlight. Store it in a cool, dry place. Store it in an airtight glass container, like I just said. Am I repeating myself? No, you're good. That's all right. Um, You know, the little humidifier type packs that you might get in a prescription, something like that. Uh, You can go on anywhere on on the web, and you can find these things, and you can order them. And throw one of those in your your, uh, mason jar. Your mason jar, and it helps keep the moisture away so your uh, cannabis doesn't mold. Um, keep it away from heat sources, electronics and appliances. Don't store it in the refrigerator and don't store it in plastic. Um, but here's the biggest thing. Don't stress about storing your weed. What's the best way to take care of it? Smoke it. Smoke, smoke, smoke. Smoke it. Smoke that weed fast. So that is how you need to store it. I, you might have gone into some more in-depth um processes for storing it but yeah i mean, I mean that's hit, the keep it simple kind of yeah way, and you hit right? you hit the nail right in the head especially you know I, I i had an argument with an old buddy of mine a while ago he called me up and we were talking he goes oh i keep my i keep my my weed in bag and i keep it in the freezer i'm like what now i read some articles of some guys that keep their stuff in air sealed bags and like big refrigerators and stuff like that I, I don't know much about the air sealed bags that it does it does keep it fresh and it keeps the scent out i don't know keeping in the in a, in a uh a cold refrigerator and a big air suit bag will hurt the terpenes or not. Um, from what I'm reading, it does, and some people say it doesn't. So that's going to be up to you. Same thing with the freezer. If you're going to put something that has liquid in it, a plant does have liquid in it, the terpenes are little crystals, little liquid crystals. If you do that, those crystals will freeze. And you won't, I don't think you're eventually going to – you can't thaw them out. They're just going to break and crack apart. So I don't think you should keep your cannabis in your freezer. And I, I read a couple of old-timers that talk about keeping it in the freezer. I disagree. Up to you, though. What I do is I keep mine in mason jars. You can get them airtight. There's a regular good old mason jar. I put one of those Bondifieds, uh humidifiers, uh, dehumidifier in there so keep the moisture out. And keeps my, my cannabis nice and fresh tasty i don't lose any terpenes uh and the trichomes stay on there nice and my thc hits me just fine so that's up to you just a little some tips uh on keeping your weed and how long your weed will last um hopefully that helps if you got any questions though reach out to us on that we'll help you out with that um here's some good news it all depends if you consider this good news because of uh the uh the pandemic and what's going on with the illicit market And because the last three months have been some of the highest cannabis sales for recreational and medical in all the legal states, it is eating away at the illicit, illegal cannabis market right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's good. The um, legal sales have boomed, like I said, in the last three months since COVID happened. People are home, they're getting baked, and they're having a good time. You know, the legal marijuana industry has spent years battling illegal sellers who have eaten away at the market share and undercut its prices. But because of COVID has helped us people stay home and be able to just smoke weed at home, go to your dispensary, pick it up and come home. Now, here's the thing. We don't know how much the illegal illicit market actually really sells. No one no one really knows. They estimate uh, – they also estimate on how much they, they 
they bust and how much is that worth street value wise so but as we take more away from the cartels and we put it into the pockets of the people here in the united states through tax taxes and what uh, the government taxes for federal aid programs we don't get that with the illicit market yeah you might get a little cheaper buying it from your back end alley deals but you're not helping out your own country by buying it through the back end deals now if somebody wants to sell weed i hey by all means if that's how you make your living and that's what you want to do illegally i don't judge but you're not helping out anybody that needs that money so i like this is going on because you got to think uh, July was some of the biggest months in cannabis sales, uh, in recreational and um, uh, medical. Illinois did 61 million. Uh, Michigan did 200 million. Colorado, a couple hundred million. California, 390. Like no, that's gross, total sales. Just gross gross sales. total sales. Whoa. California, 398 million. Oh. Some of the largest months, Oregon, Washington. They had some of the biggest months. Massachusetts, I mean, Florida. So do you think that because, like, people are home and we're not going out anywhere, they're like, hey, let's explore it a little bit. Let's see what happens. Let's try it. We're not doing anything all weekend. In a couple of episodes, we did talk about some of the baby boomers starting to smoke mm-hmm. more than millennials yeah. and looking into more options, edibles, mm-hmm. uh, body lotions, and stuff to help them out. So I think the older generation is back to smoking cannabis because it's becoming... Yeah. No one's looking at people anymore when you smoke cannabis. No one's saying, "Ooh, look, he's smoking. Uh, I I beg to differ. Well, I I don't know. I mean, then the baby boomers are at home and just doing it in their own private house. That's what I'm saying. People are home. They're they're not entertaining, so they're just home by themselves. So, hey, we're home all weekend anyway. How bad could it be? Let's give it a try. The sales don't lie because everything's registered through the state so they could see how much is being sold through the stores. So it doesn't lie. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's just nuts how much is going on right now and how much all yeah. these states, the last three months, cannabis sales have gone through the roof. And you can look at all this online, how much the states sold by month, by year. So they don't, they can't hide anything. The, tax, the taxpayers see all this because they are the ones that help get it legalized through voting. So if you want to see what your state's doing and what's going on, you can look at, in Illinois, you can, you can look at how much medical is doing, how much recreational is doing, how much is going through t- in taxes. You can look at how much products were sold for that month and for the year. So it's crazy. So just know the illicit market is hurting. And as this gets more and more legal, more and more states get legal and it goes federally legal, I don't ever going to say the illicit market will ever stop, but it's putting a damper into it, which I'm kind of happy about. Mm-hmm. So um, we talked about this in a couple episodes ago about Arizona – uh, taking cannabis off the legalization ballot. Well, Arizona, you did some good. It's on the ballot for November. Congratulations. Let's get that thing recreational in Arizona. Like I said, I love your edibles. Um, the first medical marijuana dispensary opens up in Virginia this month. That's Pretty cool. good. Way yeah. to go, Virginia. Uh, medical, and they got... You can go on uh, Virginia Normal, and I've talked about Normal's website. And you can go on there and, uh, about how to get your your your, um, your medical card, the process you got to do, your licenses. Um, what's kind of cool is uh, there's five more dispensaries designated uh, through health services regions throughout the state about to open up in the future here too. Some of the dispensaries are opening are Dahmer in Bristol, uh, Greenleaf in Richmond, Columbia Care in Portsmouth. And beyond hello and, and mana, mana asses, mm-hmm. man asses, mana ass asses, <laughs> M-A-N-A-S-S-A-S. I guess we would confuse man anybody. Asses. Yes. How'd it go? Man and asses. Man and mana asses. Man mm-hmm. has asses. Yeah, we're not going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you eligible for medical marijuana program in Virginia? You can qualify for a medical marijuana program as long as you have uh, a condition that registered practitioner thinks could benefit from cannabis treatment. If you're unsure, if your condition qualifies, talk to your provider about your symptoms. Uh, how do you register? Currently, there are three separate registration processes depending on whether or not you're a practitioner, patient, or pay, uh, parent guardian of a patient. Oh, that's interesting. i got to see and read more about uh, what the legal age is for medical in, in Virginia. Um, however, all the applicants must be processed through the Virginia Department of Health Professions uh, initial application site. Each application reportedly takes seven to ten days. That's awesome. That's pretty quick to process. It must be renewed annually. 
That's not bad. The fee is 50 bucks for patient and 25 for practitioners. Wow, that's cheap. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Uh, parents, guardians, and registered agents. For further details, like I said, visit the normal website. Uh, what do you need to do in Virginia? The following documentation is required to register. Uh, completed certification from a registered practitioner. Proof of patient's residency. Proof of patient's identity. Proof of patient's age. Proof of parent, guardian, residency. Proof of parent, guardian, identity. And proof of parent, guardian, age. Huh. You also need to provide written certification from a board of pharmacy registered practitioners. Uh, can your doctor give you a certification? Only a registered practitioner can supply written certifications for medical cannabis products. My hand's up. My hand's up. Go ahead. Talk. So there's been an ad on FM radio, so not news radio. And so I just grabbed my phone to do a little Google search. I thought it was called like Verilife or something health. Anyway, it was nationwide. You could call this number. If you wanted to get your uh, medical card in a medical state, you call this number and they connect you. For $199, they put you through the whole process. They connect you to a doctor and I guess you do like an online interview with the doctor and That's they get awesome. your paperwork done. And it's na it, I, what caught my ear even more so was that it was nationwide. Hmm. So I am not finding it. Uh, like I'm finding a dispensary with that name. I found like a cannabis information, but um, I will try to find it and we'll hashtag it on our Insta. So um, on our Instagram, once we figure out what the yeah absolutely the or email is. us or DM us if yeah. you want to know too. If we can't, if we'll get it for you guys. And that should that's actually pretty. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. We'll find out for you some more information. Uh, as you know, we've been talking a lot about. Uh, Nonviolent crimes through uh, through marijuana, um, uh, people getting uh, incarcerated for marijuana for low level crimes. Uh, I'm going to read you this uh, because we have a veteran, a lot of veterans in our family, one that's close to our heart. I, I'm you know as we talk about PTSD and veterans needing cannabis, uh, a disabled Iraqi veteran faces five years in Alabama prison for legally prescribed medical marijuana. Now his name is Sam Sean Worsley who helped clear roadside bombs during the Iraqi war is facing five years in one of America's most violent prison systems for legally prescribed medical cannabis. What? Yeah. By all accounts, Sean, Sean Worsley is a war hero here under purple heart, along with a, a laundry list of additional military accolades for clearing roadside bombs in Iraq. That's one crazy fucking job. Uh, he also entered a lifetime of post-service ailments, including post-traumatic uh, traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, sure and traumatic brain injury, TBI. As a result of his injuries, Worsley was given a 100% disability rating from the Department of Veterans Affairs. He treated the worst symptoms of both injuries with medical marijuana prescribed to him legally in Arizona. Good for him. That's mm -hmm. awesome to hear that he did that instead of going on opioids. Yep. Good for you. Now, Worsley sits in an Alabama jail facing five years in the state's notoriously violent prison system after admitting to an officer that he was in possession of medical marijuana while driving through Alabama and a subsequent probation violation for missing a court date. Wow. In 2019, a Department of Justice investigation into the state's men's prison found the system consistently violates inmates' Eighth Amendment rights by failing to protect them from a prisoner-on-prisoner -prisoner violence and prisoner-on-prisoner -prisoner sexual abuse. Worsley's ordeal began in 2016 when he and his wife, Ebony, were arrested late one night after stopping for gas. They were traveling through the state on their way to North Carolina, where they were planning on helping Sean's grandmother repair extensive damage to her home after Hurricane Matthew flooded her community. Hmm. We were not being uh, combative. We were being completely compliant. Ebony Worsley told Fox News, we were being very cooperative, so not thinking that there was going to be a major issue. I showed him I, I don't want trouble, don't mean any harm. Alabama's marijuana laws are highly criminalized, and medical marijuana exceptions are non-existent from 2012 to 2016. An analyst by the Southern Poverty Law Center in Alabama, uh, Appleseed, found that 89% of people arrested for pot or arrested for simple possession. God, such garbage. Um, the same analysis found in 2016, the year that Worsley was arrested. Alabama law enforcement made 2,351 arrests for marijuana possessions, over 1,000 more than they made for robbery. Hmm. That year, black people in Alabama were found were four times more likely than the, their white counterparts to be arrested for uh, cannabis, according to the SPLC. Jeez, that's ridiculous. Currently, possession for personal use in Alabama is punishable by up to a year in prison and a $6,000 fine. 
according to Normal, uh, a marijuana advocacy organization who we've talked about many times on this podcast. Um, Fox News reviewed dozens of court documents related to Sean's case, including his Arizona medical marijuana program ID card. So he was issued a card in 2016, expired in 2017. It was current at the time of his arrest. Wow. His military service card also indicated that he is a uh, pre-mentally disabled veteran. Gosh, they did not. Wow. Sadly, it's not uh, abnormal, Isaiah James, a veteran who works with the Black Veterans Project, told Fox News. Sean told them, listen, I have PTSD. I have TBI. Here's my medical marijuana card. My marijuana is a right there. The cops still don't give a damn. The judge wow. doesn't give a damn. The court doesn't give a damn because they don't see it, uh, any of that stuff. All they see is your blackness. Worsley incarceration was initially covered by the progressive advocacy group Alabama Appleseed. The comprehensive article stoked outrage among the readers and helped the GoFundMe page for Worsley legally fees exceeding the initial $80,000 goal. On. The article also sparked a response by District Attorney uh, Andy Hamlin, the prosecutor in the charge of Sean's case. In an unsolicited post on, to his Facebook page, Hamlin defended the decision to jail Worsley and cited prior marijuana possessions convictions as a reason to incarcerate the veteran. While it is true that Mr. Worsley's decorated veteran of the United States military, it is also true that he's a criminal that has habitually broke the law in numerous states, Hamlin mm -hmm. wrote. In fact, he's a three-time convicted felony, two of which were for possession with the intent to sell to distribute controlled substance in North Carolina. Hamlin's office did not respond uh, to multiple requests for comments. Uh, Alabama Attorney General Steve Marshall's office did not return requests for comments. Uh, Worsley has never been convicted of a violent crime or one against the individual victim. In Alabama, Hamlin said Worsley was arrested with numerous containers of marijuana, two grinders, and a digital scale. The Worsley consented to the search of the vehicle. So he consented. Yeah. Sean provided the officer his medical marijuana ID, and the officer is known for... Just because he had a scale yeah. and he had two jars of cannabis, some people weigh their cannabis out to make joints and stuff like that. Right. It doesn't mean he was intending to sell. What is he going to what is he going to sell? He's got two it's not like he had pounds. He probably right. had an ounce. How much how much is he going to sell in in in, in a North Carolina? A bud to his brother and a or, bud to yeah, his sister. Probably, you know. <laughs> um a couple buds to the neighbor. So he entered a guilty plea in 2017 and was sentenced to 60 months on probation, ordered to complete a drug treatment program and pay thousands in fees and fines. By that time, he was sentenced, and Worsley had moved from Arizona to Nevada. Sean was ordering to find drug treatment in Arizona, and he and his wife moved back to the state and lived in a month-to-month -month rental. Uh, they're a very cute couple, by the way. There's a picture of them on here. His probation officer in Arizona said their housing situation did not meet the requirements of stable housing, and Worsley would, not, uh, would have to contact the courts in Alabama to come to an agreement. While they waited on the on that, Sean attempted to comply with the rest of his conditions. In February 2018, while attempting to comply with his court-ordered drug treatment, Worsley sought a drug treatment assessment from the from the VA. The agency denied that he needed drug treatment. <laughs> Obviously, well, he used cannabis to help his PTSD. He yeah. wasn't addicted. Right. Um, Worsley struggled to maintain housing and jobs as a result of felonies they had. Of course, we've read about this on on pa on a prior episode when we talked about the nonviolent crimes. Um, let's see here. Uh, he was bribed with a complica uh, com compilation of emails Sean sent to his lawyer, Scott Foster, between August and September 2019. And then Worsley acknowledged his responsibility to comply to terms of his probation, asked Forrester and the courts to allow him the opportunity to recessify the situation from here so that Sean can continue caring for Ebony and avoid another homeless situation. So they didn't even give a shit, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, in 2020, when Sean was pulled over by the police in Arizona while he was driving to Ebony's sister's to help with some home repairs, he had, he had cannabis with him. However, due to his, jo his job loss and lapsed VA benefits, he couldn't afford to update his expired medical card. So it's even worse. This hmm. poor guy. Uh, Arizona police didn't think Alabama would extradite him over, over marijuana, according to the Appleseeds reporting. Pickens Cali did want him extradited and add the cost of the transport. So they, they, they brought him from Arizona to Alabama. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, Worsley has been held in Pickens Jail since early 2020, awaiting transport to the state prison wow. system. You can read the rest of this. Uh, this poor guy is just sitting. He's a disabled veteran, needed cannabis. Everybody makes mistakes. But Alabama, you need to de at least decriminalize cannabis for like anything under an ounce because that is just horseshit. And he's a veteran. A veteran that probably could have got killed taking mines out of the ground, mm -hmm. right? To protect other people. To protect other soldiers. And also, mm -hmm. a lot of those guys were there. Civilians. Were civilians. 
kids, there's a tons of kids that would lose their, their feet and legs from, from mm-hmm. walking through these landmines. And this guy is a decorated hero. And we hear, especially in Alabama, you would think they would, they would care for a veteran like that. Mm-hmm. Come on, Alabama, get your shit together. This guy needs to be released. You need to fix your, 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 your cannabis laws down there. And it's total horse shit. So Sean, if I can ever get you on the show or get some people who know you on the show, I'll be happy to do it. If anybody knows him or family wants to come on the show with us and talk about his story and we can help you guys raise money through his GoFundMe page, he deserves a shot, a veteran, a decorated veteran. Mm-hmm. Um, cannabis and cancer in the clinic. There, I've read some articles about this, about uh, uh, cannabinoids and cancer, and they're finding there's more and more research going on right now with this. And this is a good thing because... And I'm not going to read the, the articles and stuff like that. I'm just going to say I'm happy that they're doing more and more research now and finding out that not only just uh, the TH, the um, not just getting helping them during their process of uh, what do they go through um, radiation and uh, chemo. chemo, helping them with all that and uh, also giving them their appetite back. It's also they're finding out that cannabinoids are uh, helping uh, fight cancer cells. Yes, which is great. Yep. So, because people, we have an endocannabinoid system. Go figure. Mm-hmm. Just so happens, cannabis has cannabinoids that do marvelous things for your body. And we have a cannabinoid system. Ha! We have receptors in our body just set up to receive. So, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's great because what. It's amazing. It's the whole plant is what we've been trying to get you get everyone to learn about, not just the THC, not just the getting you high part of it. There's so much stuff that we're learning today and going to learn more and more once they release it and they can study mm-hmm. more and more of it that it is going to fight cancer. I'm going to read you another article here in a second. Um, I think that's the most exciting thing is that now that it's becoming more recognized as you know a probable treatment for a lot of ailments – and the laws are changing on how we use it and how um, it's produced, I think that there's going to be just so much crazy research that happens because any research that happened before was just kind of under the radar. Now there's going to be freaking huge – there's going to be pharmaceutical companies doing research like they do on their um, cancer-treating drugs and all of – you know. MS and all those, all the big drugs that they're, they're producing, they're going to be studying marijuana that way, which, you know, of course we're not looking forward to like them, um, creating synthetics. We're not looking forward to them, you know, doing GMOs and adding chemicals and mass producing. We're not into all that, but the research that will come alongside with everything that's happening is just going to be amazing. There, it's. I just can't wait to see like flash forward like twenty years from now, and how far cannabis comes along into like the natural health oh, yeah. industry and. Oh yeah, it's gonna be yeah, absolutely medicine and treatment and yeah, it's I gonna mean, be so cool. As we talked about cannabinoids, people. I, I think I'm sorry, but it's Go just ahead. cool. I think everyone will be growing it in their homes. It you know every season when you plant your tomatoes, you're gonna be planting a cannabis plant. Two it's or just three. gonna be it, two tree. It's gonna plants. be what we do. And you're going to make, you know, some cookies and you're going to consume it. Absolutely. Get ready, people. Well, here's the cool <laughs> thing about them with cannabinoids and cancer. Um, in, in Israel, they're f- probably one of the – there's a lot of countries overseas that does a lot more medical research than the United States does because we have an FDA system here. But a lot of these governments in other countries want to find alternative medicines and wants to find medicines that help and not just being – bought by lobbyists of medical companies in the United States where they don't allow them to do a lot of this stuff. But in Israel and other countries overseas, they get to study and they get to research. And, it, and here's one cool thing. Israel's study finds efficiency, um, effectiveness in using cannabis terpenes to treat COVID-19. Wow. The fledgling study, now it's early, okay, yeah. being carried out by the Israeli cannabis research and development f- uh, firms Abenia and Canisol Devolves into uh, the effectiveness of using cannabis terpenes in treating COVID-19 infections. Hmm. The initial result from the Israeli in vivo study testing the benefits of using cannabis terpenes to treat inflammatory infections such as COVID-19 have been quite promising. Good stuff. The fledgling study 
being carried out by Israeli cannabis research and development firms is centered around examining the effectiveness of the use of a unique cannabis terpene formulation, uh, NTVRL, with respect to treating inflammatory conditions such as kytokine storm syndrome, okay, which commonly occurs in serious cases of COVID-19. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Did not know that. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, kytokine storms occurs when the body overproduces immune cells and their activating compounds, causing dangerously high blood pressure, lung damage, respiratory distress syndrome, and organ failure. This is a common occurrence in some patients where the immune system response to COVID-19 is extreme and goes into overdrive to fight the virus. We've been talking about this. Keep your immune system up high. Do whatever you got to do. Um... Accumulating evidence shows that the many COVID-19 patients die because of the increase in the production of the inflammatory kytokine molecules rather than the virus itself. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. The preliminary results were highly positive, highly, <laughs> demonstrating significant anti-inflammatory activity of terpenes and breaking the perception that terpenes are just flavorings and fragrance and compounds with a placebo effect, said uh, Ibania, co-founder and CEO of Nod. Nadav Alia. You, wow, sorry <laughs> got about that. some rough words there. Yeah, that just is brutal for me. Um, you, utilizing Ibanez's property technology <laughs> of biological data mining, data processing, and formulation design allowed us to develop our data driven NTVRL formulation, effectively targeting specific health conditions, he added. This is the opening of a new world of synergistically effective natural formulations. Ooh. Hmm. Holding therapeutic capabilities in which the single active pharmaceutical ingredients will have difficulties to match. Can you remind me what we're talking about? We are talking about <laughs> COVID. <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. In Israel. <laughs> in Israel. Thank you. Finding, that's okay. I'm back. I'm back. Um, so their hypothesis was formally based off of previous research uh, for the SARS virus. Um, so that is awesome that they're mm -hmm. finding that they are, that can um through terpene formulation can help fight uh this coyotein secretion and stuff like that so that's pretty dope go israel mm -hmm. that's our international that's one of our international news is today so go israel keep on fighting the good fight and finding okay. more stuff on how cannabis is going to help us with our bodies do it because we're not mm -hmm. so we appreciate you so do you want to know why i lost track yes because i'm wearing a t-shirt that has a raw edge and in case you don't know what that means, like the, the hem of the T-shirt isn't <laughs> folded and stitched. So it's just like a raw cut of fabric. I rather like that finish on, on tops. Yes, I do. And But I'm looking at like that raw edge and it has this kind of like, like line. But it's kind of precise in how often it changes from straight to crooked, straight to crooked, straight to crooked. And I realized I watched a video of like a factory where they were producing masks for COVID-19 uh -huh. protection. And they had like a hacksaw table, like a carpenter's hacksaw table or like a butcher's hacksaw. Whoosh, and they were like cutting through slabs of fabric. It was so impressive. And I would guess that that's what happened to my shirt. So we, we thank grow, you. We grow thank really you. good weed because Miss, Mrs. Weedman's like really out there right now in her thinking. So just that, think about that. I know how they way. made the shirt. Okay. That's we're good. good. Go ahead. <laughs> That's why I forgot what we were talking about. Burner Thoughts by oh, Mrs. Weedman. God. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> For all my UK uh, folk, uh, burner stoners and potheads out there, um, some UK news. Athletes to face shorter bans on recreational drug use. Woohoo! Probably everyone jumping for joy after that one. Uh, athletes who failed drug tests for cannabis and cocaine use. C -c -c cocaine. I want me some of that. C -c -c cocaine. Hmm. Views will face shorter bans as the organization looks to place a greater focus on performance enhancing drugs. The reform is part of a wider movement focused on athletes' welfare and the uh, acceptance of widening cannabis use. There you go. There you go, UK. Uh, hmm. So that's our international news with Israel and UK this, this, on this one. All right, I'm not a very good joint roller, I, and I'll admit it. I've been smoking cannabis since I was 13, seen cannabis and smelled cannabis at the age of five. Uh, 
while a joint was being passed around the room when I was eight, I was given it to me to pass it, and I put it in my mouth, and they slapped it out of my hand. Just a little honesty there. Uh, but I've never been really good at rolling joints. I try not very good at it. I'm good at stuffing them. I'll stuff the shit out of a joint. I could stuff them with those new prefab ones, I guess you want to call them now. You know what sucks is I watch people roll joints all the time. Yes, I am a little jealous because I've been smoking for a long time. But the one thing that weirds me out, and I know why you have to do it, is when someone would link, lick the joint back <laughs> and forth. You know, they would lick it and, it, and then they would take the lighter and they would burn burn it, all the all the mm -hmm. juice off and slime and boogers <laughs> oh, and gross. shit they used to roll the, the joint. juice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people would have, you know, some people have really wet, yeah. mouths and they leave a little slobber so that's why mm -hmm. I use the lighter and I always enjoyed that part taking the lighter and drying it um, that was always fun but so and now COVID time would you want somebody licking your joint no and you don't even want to share a joint we got like joint condoms they were like <laughs> 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 right we went to a couple of head shops and we're like do you have anything like that we could put on like the end of a joint so we could still pass the joint and everybody could have their own little end of the joint so yeah we found little condoms and they sit over the end of the joint or the joint sits into it it's like a little plastic cone i think they use them for hookahs and it's disposable so each person can have their own and throw it in their pocket for later and you can pass the joint and they just put it in their little and they were only a quarter their little weed joint condom take a puff puff and pass it along it's pretty special but guess what some dummy yes i'm going to call him a dummy mm -hmm. Dumb who dumb. worked at a manufacturing facility a processing facility decided to lick the joints so State regulators in Michigan issued a recall order for pre-rolled joints sold at more than a dozen retailers over reports that an employee in a marijuana processing facility licked the products as they were being made. <clears throat> that is right, people. He was licking <clears throat> the joints. <laughs> Not good. Not good. Okay. So the recall order covers cannabis pre-rolls that were manufactured by 38 Four three Euclid LLC. So I believe that is a brand parent company, maybe. Um, in a public health and safety bulletin issued on August 6, the agency reported that the recall was being ordered after a confirmed complaint of pre rolls contaminated with human saliva. <laughs> State officials began an investigation of the facility on July 31st, and the pre rolls covered by the recall ordered were sold at several different retailers and provisioning centers between june and early august so all of you uh michiganites check your pre-rolls they might have some spit on them take a lighter and yeah go back Clean and forth that. a couple yeah. times on hair dryer it. something don't waste that <laughs> yeah. don't waste that cannabis that's so for sure. <laughs> state officials issued a 14-day suspension of the license held by 3843 euclid llc <laughs> pending further investigation, and Michigan's Marijuana Regulatory Agency, otherwise known as MRA, has also placed an administrative hold order on all products manufactured by this processor. After the hold order was issued, the company informed MRA that it had voluntarily put a halt to all operations at the end of the business day on July 31st. So at least they were responsible. They stopped. Sounds like they're trying to get to the bottom of it. Um, but Did the they MRA, fire that guy? well, they don't know who that guy is. Oh. That's still happening. Jeez. I mean, this is all pretty recent. So uh, the MRI or MRA, sorry, did not include information about the health of the employee who had licked the pre rolls, um, and they did not note if there was an, a threat of any infection of the novel coronavirus or any other disease, but. It's noted that the investigation is continuing and that future recall orders may still be issued if they can't find that guy. You know that guy. I mean, that's just Frickin absolutely. Dummy. What the I mean, heck? come on. I'm What's gonna, he thinking? I'm going to play something right now because that's just him. You are an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> Say it again. Yeah, that was too fast. That was too fast. Okay. 
You are an idiot. <laughs> you are an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. What's that just... <laughs> hey, I have to say, do you remember if this was a French Yes, it was rose? a French rosé. Okay, uh, I think it was eight ninety nine at Aldi. They had a French rosé. This stuff is freaking delicious. It's not too sweet. That's and it's not too dry. Aldi. This is Aldi. No. Oh, this is the stuff. My sister, yes. she brought me a bottle of rosé. We'll call, this. Her, we'll call oh. her Auntie Weed Man. And we'll weed call man. her Aunt, Auntie Money. Yeah. Auntie Money <laughs> brought over a French rosé that was probably not the nine ninety nine French Absolutely rose not. from Aldi or eight ninety nine. Although that stuff gets like eighty seven points. That stuff is good. I would say this stuff is pretty good too. This stuff is I I'm not it's a big probably wine like drinker. a fifty dollar bottle. Yeah, it's very good. But Thank I'm not you. really a believer in like expensive equals good tasting. So anyway, cheers. Salute. Back to business. Yeah. Montana. We mm-hmm. talked about them. Guess what? They're putting adult use legalization initiatives to qualify for November twenty twenty ballot. 420,000 people signed it. That a that a baby. That mm-hmm. a baby. Way to go Montana. Um you know, I've been smoking cannabis for a long time. I'm like we've said I've never been a wake and baker, but I've been known to smoke throughout the day, you know. I'm not a wake and baker though. I'm a coffee drinker in the in the morning. Um but I smoke weed periodically throughout the day. I'm more of a nighttime. I'll smoke from the time I get off work. To the time I go to bed. Um, I've never once like had a terrible job performance Mm-mm. at all. I mean, I've been smoking cannabis for a long time. And my job performance has never, ever suffered. I've never been fired for smoking cannabis. Uh, I've passed every drug test, but I don't know how, but mm-hmm. I have. Uh, but my performance at, at work has never suffered because of my cannabis use and i know people who are functioning alcoholics that go to work every day and no one yells at them or fires them and people know they drink Mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that have to be closet cannabis one hitters and go out to their car real quick or take a break and go to whatever now you got pens and stuff like that and cartridges and stuff and edibles that you can take but the point is has your job performance since you've become a regular cannabis smoker Mm -hmm. i would say how long have you been mrs weed man a regular cannabis smoker like Like a daily smoker yes Maybe in the last year. Year. But you've been smoking cannabis on the reg, though. For like about five, five, six years? No, let's say seven now. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. yeah seven years seven. now yeah. on the reg. Yeah, that's about right. But the last year, I would say actually more like... But two. I would say like then on the reg meant like uh, Going out. once or twice a weekend. Yeah. Or a we week. go out. A yes. Week, yeah. But now you're every night. Yes, every night. Has your job performance suffered at all because of your cannabis use? Absolutely not. This is all you. Take all it right. away. So guess what, people? Another study. Woo, woo. I love studies. I love studies. It's just kind of like... It can, Hold on. For what? someone who was a terrible studier, I know. Yeah, you I love, love studies. I love data, and I love research. You do. Oh, it's great. If you had cannabis, mm-hmm. or let's say CBD, or yeah. let's say a higher CBD, low when THC, I was a student. when you were a student, like that two-to-one ratio stuff that we smoke, mm-hmm. do you think you would be a better student? It's possible. I think so. Mm-hmm. I, you're thinking when you're when you're on cannabis, yeah. your mind is concentrating. I've, I get more focused. Yes, and I've, I like we've been together. In. We've been together for 26 years. We know each other pretty well. Mm-hmm. You're more apt to being in tune to one thing and staying on track when you're on cannabis mm-hmm. than when you're not on it. Yeah, and that I'll get back to that too. The exact point that he's making, um, Mr. Weedman. There, uh, I will get back to that because. Um, that's right. So, <laughs> anyway, so here we go with another study, and this is about marijuana, which I really like the word cannabis, but all the, a lot of the articles, now that I think about it, a lot of the articles that we read, they refer to it as marijuana. In the United and States, then, they like, do. Yeah, and then, like, the derogatory articles always say pot or weed, but if it's, like, informative or studies... They because tend to say cannabis or marijuana. No, it. I know. Yeah. yeah. But like so. we said, call whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. I do like cannabis. I, I think cannabis is cool. So anyway, this says marijuana use. So I'm going to talk about marijuana <laughs> for a minute. So they're talking about marijuana use in this study. And uh, after work, does it have an impact on your job performance? So we're not talking about Wake and Baker. We're not talking about the person that smokes all day and works through it. We're talking about the person that... 
like you'd have a glass of wine or a beer after dinner, you smoke weed. So you're a very recreational, like evening before bed kind of smoker, right? That person. Does it affect your work? And I love this. I love this study because this is kind of my soapbox. This is what I preach all the time. You know, everybody, like, will talk about Uncle Joe. Oh, Uncle Joe is hysterical. He's always freaking drunk. Uh, he's <laughs> the party. life of the party. Oh, Joe, Uncle Joe. But then there's, like, Cousin Steve. He's such a freaking loser. All he does is smoke pot. Duh. And then he just sits around. It's like, well, uh, what's the difference? Why is Uncle Joe so cool? And why is Uncle Steve such a loser? Like, pot and weed? Uh, what's worse? Nothing, right? Not Actually, I think alcohol is worse. Um, so my soapbox all the time is that. Like, I love weed. <laughs> I love cannabis. I love marijuana. I love it. I think it's just fantastic. Um, I just was talking to a coworker friend the other day, and um, there was a conversation about someone in the family potentially growing and is it dangerous and all these things. So I was talking about the laws in Illinois and what you can and can't do. And yes, you can grow if you have a medical card. Um, but I also talked about like, you know, like it, it's, it takes a lot of effort. Well, for me anyway, to get drunk, it takes a lot of effort. You got to go through a lot. You got to drink a lot of booze and then you got to get buzzed and then you got to get drunk and then you got to sleep, try to sleep. Yeah. Good luck. Cause you can't see straight and you're spinning. So you get a crappy night's sleep, and then you wake up and you feel either like you're still drunk or you want to vomit. Like, <laughs> bleh. it's not fun. Alcohol isn't fun. Like, the little buzz feeling is fun. The drunk, like, who wants to be the drunk, be right? Drunk. Who wants to be Uncle Joe? Like, I don't know. So my argument is always that I can smoke. Like, I can have a glass of wine with dinner or whatever, and then I can go smoke before bed, and it's the most sound, uninterrupted, like Mr. Weedman was saying, the most focused sleep. Like, I, a lot of times it's that shut off. Like, I, like my, I lay down, and then it's like, oh, what did I do today? What didn't I do today? I've talked about this before. But if I smoke, I can just lay down, watch a little TV, think about my day and just go to sleep. It's just, you just, it's such a sound, it's a different kind of sleep. I and agree. I wake up clear minded. There's no brain fog. There's no, I'm hungover. There's no, I need a greasy burger. There's no, I need a toilet to puke. It, you just wake up fresh and new. Like, you it's amazing. You shower, you wake up, when it's you wake like, up from a great night's sleep, from, from a yeah. cannabis sleep and you get in that shower and all of a sudden I come out of that shower and I'm yeah, like, like ready I'm to ready. go. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. So here back to the study. So despite more states making it uh, legal to use cannabis, there is still a stigma. Like people just have this stigma against pot. And that's what they say here. Right. Especially in the workplace. Yes. So does using marijuana really affect your job performance? A new study finds it all depends on when you use it. And consuming marijuana after your shift seems to have no impact on your next day of work. Yay. So researchers from San Diego State and Auburn University surveyed 281 employees and their supervisors looking at the times workers use cannabis products and if managers notice a drop in performance. Although the results show marijuana use before and during the workday decreases performance, supervisors don't report a drop-off in workers who use it after work. To our knowledge, this is the very first study to research cannabis usage in relationship to workplace behaviors in nearly 20 years, says this Dr. Jeremy Berneath of San Diego State um, the study examines three major areas of work performance. The observational report grades on how well subjects handle their job requirements, their willingness to help colleagues, and counterproductive work behavior. Bernerth and his team asked each employee how often they use cannabis within two hours of the workday over the last year. Supervisors are more likely to report declines in citizenship behavior and increases in counterproductive work behaviors among employees using it right before work and during. I get that. You might forget that you're working and make a burger for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> the same negative effects are not present in workers using once their shift ends. 
Our research suge suggests there's no evidence that after work usage compromises work performance as assessed by one's direct supervisor. Although the study doesn't find any direct evidence of this, researchers contend using cannabis after work may be beneficial. Bernerth suggests that marijuana's effects could play a role in relieving job-related stress. Yes. The relaxation induced by cannabis may help employees restore energy spent during the day, and they may subsequently return with more stamina to devote to their job once they're back on the clock, the management professor adds. The study also makes the case for changes in workplace drug policies. Woo woo. Current illegal substance tests can only detect the presence of marijuana, but not when it was consumed. This limitation makes it hard for companies to defend a blanket no marijuana policy. So that's, again, that's more stuff that we've talked about so many times that, you know, as this whole subject matures, there's just going to be so much reform everywhere in all, in all, you know, schools, workplaces, whatever. So it's just cool. I We've love it. We've talked about this many a times mm -hmm. when it comes to cannabis at the workplace. I agree with owners of companies if they don't want people smoking it during the working hours. It's it's yeah. their discretion. It, it's their, it's, that's, that's what they want. I know people are going to get mad at me for saying this. If, you're, if your owner allows it, you know, as long as you don't get, you don't fall asleep, you know, during work, you know, and you're not lazy. You're not eating up. the profits. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if a, if an owner, it's his right to say, I just don't, if you're working with heavy machinery or you're working with stuff that can hurt and you need to be, you know, and he doesn't want you using it because of insurance purposes, that's his right. Don't be mad at him. Okay. Or if you're in a job that, like, if you're flying my plane that I'm in. Or a helicopter, 100%. or you're Maybe, a doctor, or yeah. I but mean, there's so many you professions. You shouldn't be drunk. You shouldn't right. be using any kind of anything when you're working with stuff that you know you can hurt other people with. It has to be like each workplace has to determine if it's okay, right? Just like alcohol. I mean, yeah. you don't drink. I mean, some people do. Like we said, there's functioning alcoholics, but. I, once again, I don't want a, someone flying my plane if they're drunk, yeah. someone working with heavy machinery. I don't machinery. really know any profession that I'd want them to be drunk while they're helping me. Right, 100%. <laughs> so, or high. I, I uh, you know, I worked in the bar industry. We smoked all the time because it would help us get through the night. And I can make drinks and concentrate and blah, 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 get it done. But there's times where now I'm like, I'm in, I'm in out in the market. And there's times where I, I have to be, you know, I don't need to be baked to go to a meeting you know i need to just be there and just get it done and get out but i do use cannabis every night it does help me a hundred percent end my day helps me sleep helps me clear my mind helps me think i of ideas that i probably wouldn't think about to help me with with work to be able to like maybe start a new project and because my mind was clear of not thinking about that kind of work anymore I was able to put some good ideas on paper because cannabis helped me at night. It made my uh, mind more broader. I was able to solve problems on cannabis and write mm -hmm. stuff down. Yeah, for sure. You know, so I think it helps job performance. Mm -hmm. After work, when you need to do some work at home still and you, you need to take ideas down, I think it does help. I think you come up with some mm -hmm. really good ideas. I try to save the world when I'm on cannabis every night, and I do, in my mind. Mm -hmm. And I've had some really good ideas doing it. So... I think there should be more studies. And Mrs. Weeman, you did a great job with that research. And I think there should be more studies on this. I think they should actually watch people and let some people, they do those tests all the time mm -hmm. where they film people when they get home from work. And I think they should, if you want this to be legalized at your workplace, we need to find more studies. So we should need to be willing to do stuff like this. Um, that was a great, great read and great information out there. I think it's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, for, all you that, for all you guys and gals and, and that, experience migraines and take cannabis for migraines. Mrs. Weedman has got another great read here for you all and what she was researching on migraines. We know some people that get some migraines. Some do use cannabis, some use CBD, some take pills. Some don't do anything and they just are in pain. Uh, so, But she's got some great information out here. Go ahead, Mrs. Weedman, take it away. Yeah. So some of you do suffer from migraines. I am fortunate enough and Mr. Weedman the same uh, that we don't suffer from them and I don't fully understand them. I, I don't know anybody um, immediately 
that suffers from them. But I know that they're debilitating. I know that they are a struggle. So um, for those who regularly experience migraines, life carries unique challenges. Seemingly harm harmless sensory stimuli like bright lights, strong aromas, loud noise, uh, they can trigger unbearable pain. This intense pain can be accompanied by a loss of sensation, nausea, or alarming visual changes. Oof. The disruption associated with chronic migraines can also be so constant it can even erode one's sense of self. So, although drugs commonly prescribed for the prevention and treatment of migraines help some individuals, they don't offer relief for all. Similar to many heavy-hitting medications, a host of unwanted side effects may ensue with use. However, evidence is accumulating that cannabis may be an effective treatment for migraines and chronic headaches. In November of 2019, a study published by the Journal of Pain reported that cannabis could reduce migraine and headache severity by 50%. And although tolerance can increase, cannabis does not exasperate headaches or migraines over time. Concentrates appeared to offer more significant relief than flour. So that would be like a vape or like an oil, mm -hmm. right? Um, additionally... A 2019 retrospective study published in Neurology found that 88.3% of a sample of 279 patients reported an improvement in their headaches after using cannabis. More than half of the patients noted a reduction in headache frequency, and 38.3% found their sleep improved. And here's a biggie. 50% of those using opioid medications were able to reduce their use. That's amazing. Several studies, including a 2018 review, suggest that cannabis can reduce or even replace addictive opiate medications. Hell yeah. That is amazing. Those medications are life ruiners. Let's they're, call them they're life, just, let's call them life breaking. Yeah, yeah. And like to think that this natural plant could take the place of that and give people the same ultimate response without being so negatively effective on their on their life, right? Um, if you're already taking prescription medicines for migraines but contemplating cannabis as an alternative, it's best to talk to your doctor uh, or a doctor who's experienced in cannabis medicine. As always, start low and go slow. So they did talk about in this article, uh, in the study, that uh, some people or some studies show that Higher concentrations of THC are more helpful than there's, on the contrary, others that say that more CBD is better. You don't need the THC. So obviously, as we always say, there's going to be more studies. It's, you know, there's just going to be more data and more data over the coming years. And they'll get this figured out. They'll figure out if it's the THC or the CBD. But in the meantime... Could be both. Just trial and error. Could I mean, the, you're not going to hurt ratio, yourself. Right, right. Could right. be the ratio. Could be a balance. You, yeah, could, could be a balance, be, what you right. need, you know. So it's... It, and maybe, again, because we all have maybe different opioid receptors. Or, I'm sorry, not opioid receptors. Uh, endocannabinoid systems. Endocannabinoid systems that maybe different... THC and CBD levels will be different for everybody, but it's trial and error. It's not going to hurt you to, to try playing around with it and see what seems to be more effective for you. But it sounds very promising that it could be a, uh, a very natural solution to migraine pain. Start off with some indica. See how yeah. it makes you work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any full 100% indica strains that you can mm -hmm. find out there still. Try one of those first and see if it works. So yeah. that's good stuff, Miss Sweet Man. Mm -hmm. We don't get migraines. I know a couple we're people lucky. that do. Yeah, we're, yeah. We, we're very lucky because the couple Just people that awful. I know that get them, mm -hmm. whoa, Bad. man, they're rough. Yeah. Um, some cool stuff here. Mr. Weed Man, Weed Man 420 here, is going to be taking some cannabis courses at his local junior college. I'm going back to school. I don't know, I'm a little old, but I'm going back to school. A <laughs> uh, couple of reasons why I'm going to take these courses. One, because you know what this podcast is all about. We're learning to help you learn. So I want to make sure mm -hmm. I, I am getting better and to help you learn. I need to get better. So I'm going to be taking some, uh, they're offering some cannabis courses at the local junior college. It's all online, which is kind of dope. So, um, but the other reason why I'm taking these courses is to see if they're legit or not. 
that's my other reasoning why. Cost some money. It's not a lot, actually. It's only $158 for the course. That's not a lot of money uh, for some people. Um, that's but for one of one, how many? Uh, three that's courses. Three? Oh, yeah. That's not bad. No, not bad. Yeah. But they also, the junior college that I'm going to, they're offering a certificate. It's a whole, like, 10 yeah, course. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I how don't much? know if I'm going to do that or not. I might just do. It's like a hundred. It just varies on course, you yeah. know. Uh, so they're offering a certificate that for this course. 10 courses that it's uh, there's some business courses, Microsoft Word, cannabis courses, and a couple other things. And this will help you uh, get a certificate to help you get jobs in the cannabis industry. That's cool. Yes. Yeah. And that's um, so I want to see how legit it is. And I'll promote the school once I take the courses. And for people in Illinois that want to take these courses and want to get to uh into the cannabis industry i think this certificate could help you because it shows that you're interested in cannabis it also shows that you went out and did this on your own and and got the certificate to be knowledgeable to sell cannabis also if you just want to learn to learn mm -hmm. you know because uh, there is a lot of people out of work right now and we don't know how this pandemic is going to play out in the next six to eight to 12 months uh looks like more companies are, the restaurant industry is going to take another hit it looks like in the winter time who knows there's a lot of shit going on there might be some more layoffs who knows all i know is the cannabis industry is hiring and to put yourself out there to be higher than the person that, that doesn't know much um you know mm -hmm. these courses could help you. Yeah, and check check your local community college and yeah. see what's available. Yeah, more and there's some major colleges doing it too. This be careful with stuff online though. If it's, it's you know there's some people that are doing courses that aren't through a college. They call themselves accredited, but how can they be accredited when cannabis isn't federally legal? So just be careful when you're looking at these schools. Mine's a local junior college. I did the research. I checked out a bunch of different stuff online courses, all this kind of. And I found this one. It's a local junior college in my in, in where I live at. But here's the reason why I'm telling you all this. Because there's a bunch of cannabis companies that are hiring right now. Cresco Labs, Cureleaf, Green Thumb, uh, Ty, uh, Tilray. Um, and I'm going to give you the companies uh, and how many jobs that are hiring for. You can go on their website and look what the job opportunities are. But let's say uh, Acreage Holdings, uh, the New York-based company, uh, published five job listings. Not a ton, but that's just in the past week. Okay, Cresco Labs, though, 25 positions were posted just in the Chicago based company on their LinkedIn page, but about 75 openings were posted in the last month. Hmm. Okay, and don't forget, Cresco is in like 12 different states. So that was just Chicago. So look at some of their other states they're hiring for. Uh, Cureleaf Holdings, uh, the Wakefield, Massachusetts based company, has a total of 220 job openings with 115 listings posted just in the last week. Hmm. Uh, Green Thumb Industries, the Chicago-based company, has 203 job listings. About 34 openings were posted in the last week. Uh, Harvest Health and Recreation, the Tempe, Arizona-based company, has 33 openings in the past month and nine in the past week. That's a lot. Uh, I ain't this Capital Holdings, New York-based company, had eight openings positioned in the past week, 19 in the past month. MedMen Enterprises, um, you've heard me talk about them out of California. I know they got some problems right now. Uh, so, But if you're interested, it's 18 openings in the past month. Five of those positions were listed in the last week. Uh, Schwaze, the Denver, Colorado-based company, is in need of passionate, innovative people to help with us accomplish a vision. Uh, recommended for those that are interested to check out their open roles on their website. They didn't give how many positions. Uh, Tilray, uh, Canada-based company, which is expected to report quarterly results after Monday's market closes, posted 22 job openings in the past month. 11 in the past week. Uh, True Leave Cannabis Corp., the Florida-based company, posted 286 jobs on their Lincoln page. 109 were posted in the last week, and three openings were listed over the past 24 hours. And then Windy mm. City Cannabis, another Chicago-based company, uh, 33 new jobs uh, and, and recruitment efforts uh, in their uh, other locations are opening. So if you want to get in the cannabis industry, now is the time. As I talked to you earlier the last three months were some of the highest months of cannabis earnings in all those states I mentioned. They're going to need people. They're making money now, some of these states. They're, these companies are starting to make money. They have to hire. They're going to be opening more and more cultivations, more and more dispensaries, more and more people are going to hire. It's going to employ. It's going to be a $55 billion industry here not too long, uh, and they're going to need to hire people. Mm -hmm. Transportation companies, security companies are hiring uh, they're going to be disposable companies hiring. There's going to be, you know, 
tons of job openings. So be prepared. Learn, 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 and apply yourself to it, and you'll get the job, okay? Uh, if you have any questions, just reach out to us on, on uh, email us, and we'll try to help you out as best we can. Um, so, Mrs. Weedman, mm-hmm. that weed was good. That was good. Um, helps me think. It's mm-hmm. kept me clear. I was a little euphoric when you were talking for a minute. I was seeing some little things moving around over you, but it was well, kind of cool because it was right. nice. Okay. Um, but this cannabis we grew is exceptionally well. I'm proud of myself and Mrs. Weedman. She built the tent. I grew the cannabis. Teamwork makes the dream, dream work. work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but I want to thank you guys all for listening. We're almost at 15,000 downloads around the world right now. We appreciate you for listening to us. We love you. Like we always say, please be kind to everyone out there right now. Hopefully you're staying safe. Uh, we love you. Please uh, DM us on our Instagram or check out our Instagram at Weedman420Chronicles. Uh, also on our Twitter, Weedman420Chronicles uh, Podcast on our Twitter. Uh, we are on all the platforms. Uh, on... Share us with your friends. Yeah, that's a yeah. good one too. Yeah, share with your friends. If you have people that want to learn, you know, um, also, email us at wemet420chronicles at gmail.com. Uh, Mrs. Weeman, you got anything else to say? I got nothing. Nothing? No. No? No. You did I talk need, a lot. I need good. a refill on my wine. On the rosé. It's empty. And I want to once again say I love you all, and this was a great episode of what we talked about. Thank you for listening. As Paulie always says, smoke smart, puff, puff, and away. <laughs>